works. Oh, oh, I'm not in my seat yet. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, you look so radiant this first time in the morning, sis. My goodness. Oh, that's what happens when you get up at 5 a.m. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> oh. Was it Stevie Wonder that were saying the song, Isn't She Lovely? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That song just came to my mind looking at you, sis. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm serious. Oh, I hadn't thought beautiful. about that song at all. It just came right in. Oh, yeah. I love that song. I know. Oh. Well, it's your song. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Lesson 186. Hey, y'all. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. Ooh, this is a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. Salvation of the world depends on me. On who? <laughs> Excuse me? A what? Uh, Surely he must be kidding. Salvation of the world depends on me. Here is the statement that will one day take all arrogance away from every mind. Here is a thought of true humility which holds no function as your own, but that which has been given you. Wow. It's just the opposite to the world's thinking. Isn't it? True humility is to accept that the salvation of the world depends on me. It offers your acceptance of a part assigned to you without insisting on another role. It does not judge your proper role. It but acknowledges the will of God is done on earth as well as heaven. It unites all wills on earth in heaven's plan to save the world, restoring it to heaven's peace. Let us not fight our function. We did not establish it. It is not our idea. The means are given us by which it will be performed perfectly accomplished. All that we are asked to do is to accept our part in genuine humility and not deny with self-deceiving arrogance that we are worthy. Wow, that's a big statement. Yes, it is. Self-deceiving arrogance, right? Not yes. deny it, right? No, that we are worthy. Let's not deny that we are worthy and in deep humility accept that this is God's plan. This is what he has assigned us to do. Would we argue with that or do we accept it in loving obedience? Okay. What is given us to do, we have the strength to do. Our minds are suited perfectly to take the part assigned to us by one who knows us well. Who would that be? my daddy <laughs> our creator father mother who knows us well designed us perfectly today's idea may seem quite sobering until you see its meaning all it says is that your father still remembers you and offers you the perfect trust he holds in you who are his son it does not ask that you be different in any way from what you are. What could humility request but this? And what could arrogance deny but this? Today we will not shrink from our assignment on the specious grounds that modesty is outraged. It is pride that would deny the call of God himself. Mm. Pride, pride. The, the, there's there's the, the trinity, right? The unholy trinity. Pride, pleasure, and attack that the ego builds its empire on. Yeah. Thank you, sis. Pride of the mythical me. Yeah. Attack, right. They pride, pleasure, and attack. Yeah. Pleasure, yeah. Yep. All false humility, all false humility we lay aside today that we may listen to God's voice reveal to us what he would have us do. We do not doubt our adequacy for the function he will offer us. 
we will be certain only that he knows our strengths, our wisdom, and our holiness. And if he deems us worthy, so we are. It is but arrogance that judges otherwise. There is one way and only one to be released from the imprisonment your plan to prove the false is true has brought to you. Accept the plan you did not make instead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, judge not your value to it. If God's voice assures you that salvation needs your part and that the whole depends on you, be sure that it is so. The arrogant must cling to words, afraid to go beyond them to experience which might affront their stance. Yet are the humble free to hear the voice which tells them what they are and what to do. This is that complete laying down of the I know mind, of a false past, of all false education, of all conditioning into the, I don't know what I am, but if God tells me what I am and what he's asking me to do in my humility, I accept. I accept the voice which tells me what to do and what I am. All right, paragraph six, arrogance makes an image of yourself that is not real, mythical me. It is this image which quails and retreats in terror as the voice of God assures you that you have the strength, the wisdom, and the holiness to go beyond all images. You are not weak, as is the image of yourself. The mythical me. You are not ignorant and helpless. Sin cannot tarnish the truth in you, and misery can come not near the holy home of God. All this the voice for God relates to you, and as he speaks, the image trembles and seeks to attack the threat it does not know, sensing its basis crumble. Let it go. <laughs> Salvation of the world depends on you and not upon this little pile of dust. What can it tell, the Holy Son of God? Why need he be concerned with it at all? And so we find our peace. We will accept the function God has given us, for all illusions rest upon the weird belief that we can make another for ourselves. Our self-made roles are shifting, and they seem to change from mourner to ecstatic bliss of loved and loving, we can laugh or weep and greet the day with welcome or with tears. Our very being seems to change as we experience a thousand shifts in mood and our emotions raise us high indeed or dash us to the ground in hopelessness. Is this the son of God? <laughs> Could he create such instability and call it son? He who is changeless shares his attributes with his creation. All the images his son appears to make have no effect on what he is. They blow across his mind like windswept leaves that form a patterning an instant, break apart to group again and scamper off. Or like mirages seen above a desert rising from the dust. These unsubstantial images will go and leave your mind unclouded and serene when you accept the function given you. The images you make give rise to but conflicting goals, impermanent and vague, uncertain and ambiguous. Who could be constant in his efforts or direct his energies and concentrated drive towards goals like these? 
The functions which the world esteems are so uncertain that they change 10 times an hour at their most secure. <laughs> what hope of gain can rest on goals like this? Wow. He knows us well, doesn't he? Oh, geez. Yeah. In lovely contrast, certain as the sun's return each morning to dispel the night, your truly given function stands out clear and wholly unambiguous. There is no doubt of its validity. It comes from one who knows no error, and his voice is certain of its messages. They will not change nor be in conflict. All of them point to one goal and one you can attain. Your plan may be impossible, but God's can never fail because he is its source. Do as his voice directs, and if it asks a thing of you that seems impossible, remember who it is that asks and who would make denial. Then consider this, which is more likely to be right? The voice that speaks for the creator of all things, who knows all things exactly as they are, or a distorted image of yourself, confused, bewildered, inconsistent, and unsure of everything. Let not its voice direct you. Hear instead a certain voice which tells you of a function given you by your creator who remembers you and urges that you now remember him. His gentle voice is calling from the known to the unknowing. He would comfort you, although he knows no sorrow. He would make a restitution, though he is complete, a gift to you, although he knows that you have everything already. He has thoughts which answer every need his son perceives, although he knows them not. For love must give, and what is given in its name takes on the form most useful in a world of form. And we need to stop there because some really beautiful spiritual seekers have asked this question. And I remember that I had asked it myself. How can you maintain that God is not in the gap or doesn't know of the world and yet I can pray specifically for something that I need, and then the answer is given. Doesn't that make it so that God is aware of a problem? And here Jesus is pointing to the nature of God, that God gives liberally everything it is. And that when we seem to perceive a lack or a need, and we turn to this all-pervading outpouring of love, when that love meets our thought, our thought is what is purified. As we draw close to that love, any fear that's in our thought simply dissolves, and it gives way so that the fearful image the problem that we saw before is no longer projected because our mind is healed by the love that touched it. So God doesn't enter in, but God loves us so much that simply making contact with that love dispels the fear in our thought and with it all the seeming effects. Mm. So beautifully expressed. Thank you, sis. Thank you. I just, I just love how he answers that. For love must give, and what is given in its name takes on the form most useful in a world of form. Isn't that logical? That love would be practical and useful 
and answer the seeming issue. Always. Now I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Paragraph 14. <clears throat> These are the forms which never can deceive because they come from formlessness itself. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is an earthly form of love, which as it is in heaven has no form. Yet what is needed here is given here as it is needed. In this form, you can fulfill your function even here. Although what love will mean to you when formlessness has been restored to you is greater still. Salvation of the world depends on you who can forgive. Such is your function here. Salvation of the world depends on on me. Hmm. What a what a beautiful reading. Thank you. I felt you hmm. as you were reading. I felt him as I was reading. Yeah. Thank That's what you. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You get you get what I'm saying? I do. I felt you, the Christ. Yes. There's no gap. No okay. gap. Thank you, family. Yeah, thank you, guys. You're healing us one lesson at a time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for making these alive, bringing these lessons alive. Have a beautiful day. Don't let the world down. <laughs> <laughs> what pressure. <laughs> Just be natural. Just be your natural self. The we salvation of the world depends on? Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Get on about it. We'll see you next time, family. Love you. Mwah. Mwah.